Well, Bruce yeah. Lipton, uh, we have Bruce Lipton on the show, and Bruce Lipton is an internationally recognized leader in bridging science and, and spirit, stem cell biologist and be best-selling author of uh, The Biology of Belief and recipient of the uh, 2009 Goy Peace Award. Exactly. And um, Bruce, you know, you've been a guest speaker on hundreds of TV shows, radio shows, a keynote speaker. Um, and Bruce's and, experience. And wonderful, and wonderful internet shows like this one. <laughs> and this one. And you're, you know, Bruce's experience. Experiments and, and that of other leading scientists have really uh, examined in great detail the process by which cells receive information. And the implication of this research radically changed our understanding of life. It shows that genes and DNA do not control our biology, that instead DNA is controlled by the signals from outside the cell, including the, uh, the energetic messages emanating from our positive and negative thoughts. Well. You know, I'm so glad you're here, Bruce, but the announcement uh, sounds Dirk, so, so impressive. I'm, here. But, I'm but, so glad I'm here with you, Dirk, so thank you. But what does all, you know, it sounds so impressive what I was just uh, reading here, but what does, you know, your breakthrough exactly mean for us in our day-to-day -day lives? The, the conventional science that I was teaching when I was a professor in the medical school was a science called genetics. And almost everybody's familiar with genetics. And that's a belief that genes... Uh, determine the characteristics of our lives. At first, genetics was just the physical structure. But then genetics started to encroach upon behavior and emotions. And we started to say, oh my goodness, there are genes for emotions, there are genes for behavior. And I say, well, what is the significance of this teaching? And the answer is profound for this regard, because when I was teaching in medical school, we say, yes, your traits are genetically controlled. And I say, well, what's the relevance? I get, well, as far as we know, we, we didn't pick the genes that we came with and also if we don't like the genes we came with there's nothing you can do about it you got the genes and therefore what are we teaching we're teaching people that your lives are not in your control they're in the control of this dna the genes i go well the significance about that is we don't select them we can't change them and they control us then by definition we are teaching people that they are victims of their heredity if you have cancer running in your family, then be prepared. You got Alzheimer's, <laughs> be prepared, because if you have the gene, you're going to get this. And that really disempowers people, because really what it says, you have no, well, you, you're a victim of your heredity. And, and when people give up power, then the most important understanding is that if you find yourself powerless, especially in life issues, then you seek a healer. You seek a powerful source to take care of you. So you give up control and say, the other people control me. So I go to the doctor and they give me medications and the pharmaceutical companies make all these drugs. And what are they supposed to do? Compensate for the genes that I got <laughs> that are not you know, working the way that I would like them to work. I say, well, well, that disempowerment makes us a victim. And then once we're a victim, then we pay other people to take care of ourselves. And I say, well, well, the difference of the new biology is that genes are not what we call self-actualizing, meaning genes don't make a decision. Genes don't turn on and genes don't turn off. Well, this is completely antagonistic to everybody's learning <laughs> that genes were doing this. They got, no, no, genes don't do this. Genes are blueprints. Yeah. And, and to me, it's very important to understand they are actually blueprints. And I say, well, why is that relevant? I say, well, you go into a, an architect's office and she's working on some blueprints and you ask the architect, is your blueprint on or is it off? And she would look at you like, what? there's a blueprint. There's not on or off. It's a blueprint. <laughs> I go, jeans are blueprints. And yet we give them the power of saying, oh, they turn on and they turn off and they control things. In fact, is they have no more control than a paper blueprint. And why is that relevant? Because the genes do not turn on, the genes do not turn off. I go, well, how does the gene get activated? I say, ah, uh, it's our response to the world that selects the genetic activity. And therefore, we are the ones that are influencing the genetics and the behavior of the system. So it's very interesting. We look at today's world and we look at the amount of illness that's out there in the world. And we go, oh, my God, look at a massive amount of, uh, you know, health crisis that's going on. And then I say, it has been recognized that less than 1% 
of disease is related to genes. Well, less than 1%. I go, well, then if 1% is related to genes, where's the other 99% of ill health coming from? And that's like, oh, that's related to the way we live our lives. And I go, why is that relevant? Because if it's the way we live our lives, then we are the ones that can make the changes. We are the ones that can change our health and the environment and all those issues that control our genetics. And therefore, in contrast from the programming, I am a victim and powerless in my life. The new biology says, no, you are the master. You are the one that can change your genetics. You're the one that can overcome uh, illness. But in fact, mainly you're the one that created the illness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, When you've been programmed to believe, no, you're just a victim of things happening to you. We buy into that very easily. And Dirk, there's a real important issue with that. And that is, if I buy into the genetic story, then by definition, I own irresponsibility. I'm not responsible. The genes did it. Not me. And therefore, I'm not responsible. Yeah. And the fact is, geez, well, I hate to tell you this, but it switches the other way around. We are totally responsible. Yeah. But the problem is, how can you be responsible if you have no knowledge of what to do and how life works? So we've been deprived of knowledge. And, and, and you say, well, what's the relevance? And I go, very simple. The relevance is simple. It goes like this. Knowledge is power. I go, yeah. Then listen. A lack of knowledge is a lack of power. So we perceive powerlessness only because of a lack of knowledge. In fact, when you get the knowledge, you really realize you are profoundly powerful because you are controlling this whole experience. Yeah, that's so, that's so true. And we have been misled, lack of knowledge, yeah. about how the mechanism works. And we've been misled on the nature of how our mind, our consciousness, is directly influential in regard to genetic activity. As a result of that, then we don't perceive that our thoughts have anything to do with our biology. In fact, medicine, even for the longest time, wouldn't even use the word mind. When I was at Stanford and doing my research and I was writing a paper and it really got down to understanding what I'm talking about here and I put in the word mind into the research paper, you should have seen my colleagues. They were like, you can't say mind. That's not scientific. And so at some point, we have left the mind out of the equation. Yeah. And it was really based on our belief of a, a world based on a Newtonian physics. And I said, well, what does that mean? I said, well, Newtonian physics at the world, yes, there's an invisible energy world and there's a mechanical physical world, but they don't talk to each other. So you're a physical body and your mind is an energy. And in a Newtonian world, that energy cannot influence the physical body. So by definition, then let's don't talk about the mind, take it out. And, and yet, interesting enough, as much as they want to remove the mind, they were always stuck by a very important finding. And that was this, something called the placebo effect. And it's been recognized for 100 years. I say, what is that? It's like, well, it's a belief that this pill or this medical procedure is going to heal me. And I believe it. I, I take the pill. I have the procedure. And then I get well. And, and then later I find that the pill was a sugar pill. Or the procedure was just a sham operation. It wasn't real. I go, but my healing was derived from what? Yeah. Well, not from the pill. Not from the surgery. It was only derived from the belief. So... They had to put that little belief package in the in the medical school curriculum. It's called placebo effect. And they put that in the medical school curriculum. And then, you know, maybe there's a class one morning in the four years of education. One morning, say, okay, today we talk about the placebo effect. The mind controls biology. As a matter of fact, as we know, from one third to two thirds of all healing is actually due to the mind. Is that, okay? Bruce, is that, by, is that the subconscious mind purely if you talk about the placebo effect? I'm going to talk about the uh, the mind. It's uh, both of them, okay? Yeah. Uh, and that that is an issue that we should get into in a minute, Dirk, because that's really critical. Because when we say the mind, everybody thinks it's one entity called the mind. I go, no, it's two entities, and they're interdependent. They work together, but they're separate entities. Uh, and this is where the biggest problems in our world comes from, is not recognizing that there are two interdependent elements constituting the mind, okay? So... We say, oh, the positive thinking about a drug or a medical procedure is what is actually causing the healing. Positive thinking. I go, yeah, great. Everybody's, everybody's familiar. Placebo effect. I go, yeah, but what they don't want to emphasize is 
Negative thinking is equally powerful, but works in the opposite direction. I go, what, what does that mean? I said, a positive thought can heal you, and in absolute biological scientific truth, a negative thought can kill you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, well, it's not whether it's positive or ne negative. It's really the power of thought. And that the direction of the result is really based on, is it a positive thought or is it a negative thought? Uh, because that's where the result is going to come from. Uh, and so uh, if we leave out that negative thoughts are influential, uh, it becomes a, a disempowering point because it turns out most of our thoughts are negative and redundant in the first place. Yeah. And if we don't give any credit to them or any power to them, we just say, oh, yeah, there's a negative thinking, blah, blah, blah. I go, no, it's the negative thinking that is influencing your life and taking away from the direction that you want to go in. Yeah. As I said, this has been left out of the equation because medicine would prefer to see the body as just a physical chemical machine run by a computer called genes. And therefore, by adjusting the machinery, I can control your health. Bringing the mind into the story is too confusing. It's like throwing a monkey wrench in a machine because I can't figure out now uh, what the results are because I really have to understand what the thinking is. Yeah. So if I just take the thinking out of the equation and say, give them the pill, uh, that's conventional medicine. And I say, yeah, but uh, this is where the problem comes from because give me the pill and let me know where my thoughts are because those two together will determine the outcome. And if you leave the thought out, then we get results or, or, you know, we get illnesses and disease that we can't really explain. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh, 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 because we denied there was any power in the thought. And this is a complete uh, change in the new biology that's coming up because it starts with your consciousness, your mind is the primary element that will control the fate that you have in your life. So we have to let go of the belief the body is a machine. And recognize that it is a machine, but there's a driver. <laughs> and if the driver has bad driver education, that machine will break. So uh, you go, you see when there's in a junkyard. I say, oh, look at all these dead cars in the junkyard. Why are they all here? Uh, you might want to say, oh, because they're just defective. I go, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only a small percent of cars in the junkyard are defective. The rest of them, the drivers were irresponsible or didn't have good driving skills taxed the system, broke the machine, and then put it in the junkyard. And I'm going, this is the exact same thing in our story of health. That illness is just not a natural part of the machine. That's what we wanted to blame. We wanted to blame, oh, your genes are wrong, your biochemistry is wrong, you're sick because of the machine. And it turns out, just like in cars, yeah, that, that can be a cause. But as we now know, very important fact. Only about 1% or less, 1% or less of disease is directly connected to genes. The rest of it is lifestyle. Well, we've never talked about 99% of the problem. We only talk about the 1%. Well, your focus on the 1% then is totally misleading. Because you think you try to explain everything with the 1% that the thing was defective. Ignore 99% that is how you drive this vehicle will determine the, the, the health of that vehicle and the longevity of that vehicle because if we return that knowledge to people, empower them with the knowledge that how you see the world is going to adjust your biology, then people will start to understand it's their responsibility uh, to understand if they're having a problem with the world before we go out and blame other things, which is our tendency. Yeah. is that we first must come back to our own understanding. But then, as I said, hey, if uh, you never learned this knowledge, if you had no insight into what the heck we're talking about, then by definition, you are a victim, not a victim of the body, but a victim of a lack of knowledge. And what you're saying is that we are pretty unconscious drivers. Most, uh, Yeah, well, because this is what the biology has found out. Uh, let, let, to, to, to step into this, we need to at least step back and say, the mind has two elements, as I said, interdependent, the yeah. conscious and the subconscious. Yeah. Now,